So now that you've mastered finding volumes using the disk washer method, uh, we need to be honest and admit that the disk washer method doesn't work in every single situation. Uh, so there's an alternative method of using cylindrical shells that we'll look at. And I will say that disk washer is probably the right choice about two thirds of the time. Uh, but this cylindrical shell method will help out in the other times. Um, so let's consider a function like um, sine of x. All right, so we've got y equals sine of x. And let's go from, uh, from 0 to pi. Uh, so that'll be from, from there to there. So let's keep things easy that way. And if we're rotating this around the x-axis, uh, if we're rotating this way, <laughs> uh, then we're in really good shape to use our old disk washer method from 6.2, right? So the, the rotational shape looks kind of like that. Um, and you know it's really all about one of those typical rectangles. And for disk washer method, the rectangle has to go perpendicular to the axis of rotation so that when you rotate it, you get a disc or a washer if there's a hole in the middle, uh, which means you're doing dx and you'd be great to go for a disc washer integral. Uh, you go zero to pi and you go pi r squared thickness dx uh, it turns out we don't actually know how to do this integral yet of just integrating sine squared, but at least setting up the integral uh, wasn't bad at all. Uh, but suppose they want us to rotate this shape not around the x-axis, but about around the y-axis. Uh, so if we were going to rotate this guy around the y-axis, um, so if, if the y-axis was our axis of rotation, so if we're rotating here this way, now a typical rectangle for disk washer method has to go perpendicular. So it's gonna look like that. And as we rotate that around, there is a hole in the middle, so this is gonna be washer. And if you try to set this up disk washer method, uh, first of all, notice that this is a little dy, so the integral would have to be a dy integral. Uh, which means, first of all, you'd have to solve your function for the other variable, which is doable, but you get x equals inverse sine of y. And you know inverse sine has some domain issues. And when you start thinking about the inner radius, it goes to its x there, which is inverse sine of y. But then the outer is x there, which is also inverse sine of y, but it's even out of the range of inverse sine of y. And it's just not going to be fun to set that up. Uh, so let's, it'd be really nice if I could have my rectangle going the other direction. Uh, so let's see what we can do with that. We might need to change our geometry formula a little bit. So let's say I still do want to rotate around the y-axis. Uh, but I'd like my typical rectangle uh, to go this way still. Um, and now I'm rotating one of those this, <laughs> this way. Uh, that gives me a shape here. Let's see if I can practice my drawing skills a little bit. Uh, rotating one of those uh, will give me not a disc or a washer, but But this uh, sort of this cylinder, a uh, cylindrical shell is what our book's going to call that. And that's great. It's a different shape. But if we can figure out the volume of one of those shapes, um, we could set up a different volume formula and integrate that. Uh, so the typical way that the book is going to, or that we handle this, um, and I'm going to steal an illustration straight from the book, uh, is just to say, let's take that tube. So here's the book's drawing. This is uh, in the section. 
Uh, we're going to take that tube and we're actually going to cut it open, this cylindrical shell. Uh, we'll cut it open until it makes this sort of um, you know, long rectangular brick type shape. And since that's a, a brick shape, it's length times width times height. Let's do length times width times height. Uh, would be the volume of that thing. The uh, height is easy enough. Uh, the height is just f of x. It's just the function value. The thickness or the depth or whatever you want to call it, the width, uh, is just the dx. Uh, that comes from, from this right there and that right there for the height. Uh, so the only thing we really need is the length, this length right here. And keep in mind when that was curled up, that used to be the circumference <laughs> of a circle. And we know the circumference. Uh, circumference is 2 pi r for any circle. And notice radius is this distance right here, is the x distance. So that 2 pi r turns into 2 pi x. And then we get the height, which is f of x. So there's length right there. There's height right there. And the dx is, is the width or depth. Um, so this gives us a brand new integration formula. So if you're going to use the cylindrical shell method, uh, you set it up so that your typical rectangle here, uh, your typical rectangle is parallel to the axis of rotation. And then you know when you rotate it, you'll get these cylindrical shells and you'll use this formula instead of our previous formula. So there are two different formulas based on the two different geometric shapes we'll get as we rotate our typical rectangle parallel to the axis of rotation or perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Uh, so this was just a conceptual walkthrough. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at how to work this out with a couple examples.